The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Thanks. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Well, the second part of this gospel that Christine just read got me to thinking about um, what I'll call missed opportunities. And you know, we all have them. I'm sure you can think of a few missed opportunities uh, in your life. I was, uh, I was remembering a very small one, but one that occurs to me over and over again when I was uh, studying in Paris when I was 18 or 19, uh, a friend said, do you want to go to the ballet with me tonight? And I said, oh, no, I have to study for my history test. And, and so I didn't go. And it is a, a big regret I have that uh, Nureyev, Rudolf Nureyev and Dame Margot Fontaine were dancing that night. And I miss them. <laughs> uh, a, a friend has a, a, a bigger um, missed opportunity. She always wanted to be a doctor, but she ended up marrying young and she and her husband had four children. And then she still, and she's my age, she still says, you know, I, I always thought I would be a doctor, uh, a missed opportunity and a regret. So today uh, in our gospel, Jesus is walking on the road to Jerusalem and he encounters some people who say they want to follow him, but they have a few things they would like to do first. One wants to say goodbye to his family and another says that, that he wants to bury his father, which, I mean, those things seem like reasonable requests, right? So I'm always intrigued when I hear this lesson by Jesus' disdain for their not being willing to just drop everything and go. Um, maybe Jesus is just used to a more immediate response. We indeed, in the Gospel of Mark, we, we hear that when he calls to Simon and his brother Andrew to follow him while they're fishing, immediately, it says, they left their nets and went. And then a little while later, he sees James and John, sons of Zebedee. They're mending their nets, and he calls to them too. And they immediately, it says, left their father in the boat. My, how, how must the father have felt? But they left their father in the boat with his hired men, and, and off they went with Jesus. So I guess my question uh, this morning is, how many of us would go immediately or would we be more like the ones with just a few things that they need to finish first? I suspect not too many of us actually would drop everything and just go. I've been told uh, a lot of stories by people who experienced a call to ordained ministry or to service, other uh, kind of service, that would disrupt their lives and 
And mostly they needed time to adjust their lives before they said yes. I know when, when I felt God calling me to ordination, it took several months of intense prayer before I could say yes. And part of that was my feeling unworthy, but, but there were some things that I felt I needed to do, of course. I was, I was reluctant to start commuting up to Berkeley while our son was still in high school. And, and I also really didn't want to give up working with Father Edwards as his assistant. So I'm sympathetic to those reluctant followers on the road to Jerusalem. And I'm also thinking about this business of missed opportunities. For one thing, it, is, seem, it seems unlikely to me that the man who, who wanted to say goodbye to his family would then actually be able to leave. What, what do you think? Do you think as I do that someone would pretty much try to talk him out of it and probably be successful? And the one that's even more problematic, the one who wanted to, who asked to bury his father, well, I suspect his father was alive and well, not on his deathbed, and that it would be some years before his burial, and, and then it would be too late. The, the chance to follow Jesus would be long gone. And even if they made a, a decision fairly quickly, these two would-be followers, Maybe within a day or two, they thought, well, yeah, I can do that. But, but Jesus wasn't just waiting around for them. He was already down the road, long gone down the road. And it breaks my heart for these people. I can just imagine the years going by and they're thinking, uh, Jesus once came this way and called to me, but I did not go a big missed opportunity. Interestingly, um, a similar, there's a similar story in 1 Kings concerning Elisha, who is one of the stars of our Old Testament lesson today. Um, and this isn't one that we read, but it's the story of Elisha being called to discipleship. So Elisha was out in the field plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, which which I think indicates he's from a wealthy family with a well-assured future. And along comes the prophet Elijah who throws his mantle over Elisha, which is, which is just another way of saying, follow me. And Elisha says, like the guys in our earlier story, he says, let me kiss my father and mother and then I will follow you. Well, in this story, in this story, Eli Elijah says, okay, you go right ahead. So then Elisha does this amazing thing. He slaughters the oxen, all 12 of them. He starts a fire with the yoke. He boils the flesh and he feeds the people. And thus having destroyed any chance of returning to his old life, he follows Elijah and becomes his faithful disciple for many years. So I'm guessing there's no ambivalence on Elisha's part and, and no regret uh, for a missed opportunity. Today's Old Testament lesson goes on to unfold the extent of Elisha's faithful discipleship as he follows Elijah to the very end. Stay here, Elijah says repeatedly, and repeatedly, Elisha gives the same response. As the Lord lives and as I myself lives, live, I will not leave you. And I'll say as an aside, I think those are some of the most beautiful words in the Bible. As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. And he doesn't. Because of his holy, his loyal and because of his loyalty and perseverance, Elisha is able to see Elijah ascending in the whirlwind into heaven and is also able to pick up the prophet's mantle and carry on with faithful service to the people of Israel. Again, no regrets for a missed opportunity. Well, here we are. Let's see, Christine, I think you said it was the third Sunday in Pentecost. Here we are in our in our, our uh, daily lives. And it seems to me that 
Every single one of us will have various opportunities coming our way from time to time. I doubt that any of it will, any of those opportunities will be anything as radical as leaving home immediately. But there are choices that we have every day, aren't they? About how we will proceed and how we will conduct ourselves in this, in this kind of crazy life. Maybe our choice will simply be how we interact with another human being so that we do not miss an opportunity to be a force for good. I'd like to close uh, with some words that I think you will find familiar. Dear people, life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Amen.